So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's Motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. And welcome back to another installment of Silent Nice in Pieces. This is a sub-series of the podcast Under the Stairs where we take the movie Silent Night, the remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night from 2012. We split it up into bite-sized five-minute reviewable segments. We then sit down with guests from all over the world who will review these segments with us. We'll really mine the, the depths of filmic prowess in these five minutes of Top quality movies like Silent Night from 2012. Um, On this episode, we are covering uh, minutes number 75 through 80. The kicker on these shows is that I mix up the order of when they're released. So this is not linear and this could be the first episode in the series you're hearing. This could be the last one or one in the middle. On this one, we will open with the deputy looking at the dead fake Santa, uh, Stieg Carson, who was suspected of the murders all along, but is now dead. Um, And we'll end with uh, Brenda locked in a room and the door handle starting to open. Joining me on this episode is my long-time collaborator and always, always fun friend, Mr. Gary Hill. Gary, how's it going, buddy? Oh, it's going great. Uh, Happy holidays and all that good stuff to you guys. Yay. There we go. I, I, I don't know if... Because you guys get, like, Chicago gets snow. Like, we get snow, but you guys get snow. Um, has it snowed I, I yet? Don't wanna, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, that we ain't got nothing yet, though, so. All right, well, we, we got snow. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I am kind of over it already. And it wasn't even <laughs> a lot. I was just like, yeah, we're done with this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird, because last year, we didn't get much either. Mm. And my back felt the way, like, I didn't work hard enough. To do two shovel heart attack snow, so I felt out of shape. I felt out of shape, Duncan. Yeah, I, like I am um, at the like so our, our house has like for some reason like a, a driveway which is a wee bit too long. Doesn't quite make sense for like if I was building properties on the land that like the house we're built on, I probably would build it closer to the road. But I'm sure there's a, a there's an actual reason. Um, but I think, like, it's every time I can I can feel. Just looking at it, I can feel my back ache. Um, and yeah, this morning was an unwelcome, unwelcome surprise. So uh, that was. That was I, I have to explain this though to people that may not know what this is. Yeah. Uh, heart attack snow is something that exists in, <clears throat> especially in the Midwest, because mm. of the, right by Lake Michigan and stuff, to where the, the 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 rain and the snow mix together in such a way that the snow gets so fucking heavy. That you may have a heart attack while shoveling the yeah. snow. So, the more the more you know, people. Okay. 
<laughs> well, let's let's uh, let's go from a well, let's go from talking about snow to a movie devoid of snow. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> this movie here ain't no fucking snow. Um, so we have this. This opens with uh, our deputy standing over Stieg Carson, who is a pretty horrible character. If we're being honest, he um, he's dead because he pulled a gun on a cop. Big fucking mistake. But to be honest, you can t- <laughs> you can tell this is a white dude because she takes a long time before firing that fucking. Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you're sure? Are you sure you're sure you're sure? Okay, then let's do this. Um, so he's dead on the ground, and she's looking over, and she sees a present, and then gets a flashback to her dad getting the same present in the morning. She goes, "Oh my god!" So she uh, she's racing down the road in her car. I say racing; she's actually driving in the speed limit, which I think is kind of funny. Um, but she's on the phone. She's trying to get to her parents, and uh, we get the "Hi, you've reached the Bradamores. Leave a message." And the message that she leaves is shit, shit, shit. Because she's trying to get through to them. Um, and then meanwhile at the station, Giles, the most incompetent shit heap of a cop, knocks on the door to the sheriff's office and swings his head and says, guess I'll be heading home. And uh, Malcolm McDowell, like, finally settling on a quasi-American English accent and says, oh yeah? Well, Merry Christmas then. And Giles awkwardly sings, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, to which the sheriff, pithy as always, says, what do you think this is, glee? Go home, hey, and take the trash out while you're at it. And then, inexplicably, I don't know who this is for, right? I genuinely don't know who this is for, except the director. Um, The deputy's speaking to himself, walking out with the the bags, and he's like that, what is this, garbage day? I'm like, rag... Like, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, I caught it this time around. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I sighed out loud and I was like, I don't know who, like, if you are watching this because you're a fan of the original, then you don't get this thing. Or, like, the, the whole garbage day thing where people were like, this is fucking hilarious. I can't remember that being like, a, like an internet thing until well after 2012. This is about the same time that, like, Screen Factory were looking to put out. So it was a, it's a niche joke to a select few, and I don't know why it's here. And also, it's referencing the wrong fucking movie. And all this is wrong. This is all, all wrong. For a movie that has a line earlier on where <laughs> Malcolm McDowell says, Now you're putting hummus on the burger. Like, for, for a, <laughs> like a movie that has dialogue that's talking about muddling things up and making things overcomplicated, I think this is a bad line. And I'm very happy that a couple of seconds later, Giles gets the back end of a fire axe directly in his head. And he fucking wonderful kill. Like, there's blood dripping down this guy's face. Yeah, it's the old profile kill, so we don't actually physically see it in his eye, but... Like, it looks fucking great. Yeah, it really, really does. And, um, I, I gotta agree there. Yep. If you talk about pointless stuff in, in, in this, this five minutes, they have um, a scene in there where, where in the very same scene where she shoots the guy in the head, the the, the supposed evil Santa, the, the many red herrings in this movie. Yes. <laughs> she sees, oh, nine-lettered word for a six-sided object. Snowflake. <laughs> well, that, that mystery solved, you know. <laughs> Remember this callback from the beginning of the movie nobody cares about? Yeah, it's literally mentioned twice at the beginning of the movie and then never really again after that, but yet this is a, a detail. And like I mentioned in our previous segment, which might be still to come up because who knows the release order, um, something bad happened to her partner, um, her love of her life, John, which we will get no details about in this, except she choked and didn't fire when she could have, and as a result, John died. That is literally the only information this movie gives us. However, remember that crossword puzzle? <laughs> We're going to solve it right now. Um, it's, yeah, oh, yeah. It's baffling. It's baffling. Um, Giles is dead. <laughs> like, and, um, Giles is dead. He's, he's out here. He is checked out. Um, and the sheriff receives a call from the deputy, and it's like, what now, deputy? And she's like, listen... The red and white gift box is a marker. He's marking the victims. And Malcolm McDowell, ever condescending, is like, don't be ridiculous. We got the killer sitting in the jailhouse. And she's like, listen, we got a box ourselves. I'm going home to check on my parents. He's like, calm down. 
and he puts the phone down and he goes across and opens it up and what's inside of it? A lump of coal. And then the power goes out and we get a combination of either green lighting in one place or red lighting in another. I don't know who this is helping for emergency lighting here. You know what would be really helpful? Just ordinary lights. <laughs> like, <laughs> we could power a light bulb. Let's power an actual light bulb and not a red or green light. I don't know who this is supposed to be helping here. Um, <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous. Uh, the sheriff looks up and sees um, the Santa killer holding a flamethrower pointed at him. And uh, <laughs> the sheriff says, son of a bitch. And then he draws up his gun. And oh yes, he says, oh, big mistake. Bringing a flamethrower to a gunfight. And uh, shoots. And then we get, a, and this is a great shot, right? Like, if we're talking about great shots, it's the fucking, it's the artwork for all these episodes. There's a guy in a Santa costume with a flamethrower, basically spraying a torrent of flame. And it's kind of amazing. It's a terrible digital effect in front of Malcolm McDowell, though, which is aged horribly. I don't think it looked great back in 2012. And he falls backwards. And um, the assumption is that McDowell is dead. Interestingly enough, in the segment where we're actually, we, we reveal McDowell, he looks like he's, like, slightly burned, like, he's singed at the edge. Uh, not enough to kill him, but uh, that's fine, we'll let off with it. Um, Deputy arrives home, she's shouting for her mum and dad, she walks in the living room, I don't know why I'm laughing about this, um, and she, in the chair, uh, there is her dad dressed like Santa, and his stomach is just cut open, and his insides are pulled out. And it got me thinking, this Santa has no M.O. at all. This killer, that's kind of one of the reasons I kind of love him, is if he has time to do something, he gets really vicious. If he doesn't have the time to do it, a girl's going to get shocked and stabbed with a poker. Um, it kind of works with what he's got, but the the insides, the, the, the practical effects and the visuals on this one are fucking great. Um, these moments in the movie are like that, but at least to put the money where it kind of needed to go. Yeah, they could have got some better actors in here, but if the deaths in the movie were then going to be shitty, then this is the sort of movie that kind of lives or dies a lot of the time on what the deaths are like and what the practical effects are like. Uh, this look kind of gnarly, though. What, what did you think about the, the effects here? Um, we've seen like Giles get smacked in the head with a, an axe. Now we see uh, a kindly old father figure with his insides hanging out. Yeah, they're pretty great down. The the, the father with dis disemboweled father is probably the best one of the bunch, though. Yeah. And um, I, I will say later on another segment, you, you get some some genuine Burning Man Burning Man walking effects. You do, yes. Real ones, you could tell. Yeah, yeah. And, that's um, not that's not a visual effect. That's an actual practical effect, and it's uh, always I like I have so much respect for stunt men that do that because I tell you right now, even if I even if I was getting paid to do stunts. I don't know if I would let someone else there, light me on fire. <laughs> watch, watch the the Kane Hodder documentary. There's so much that can go wrong. Oh gosh, you know. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. They, 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 that, that's probably the best. Uh, the the kill that you don't see is probably the best. Um. Of, of the the gore in the this yeah. segment here. She uh, hears a scream. She runs into the kitchen. She finds her mum lying hysterical in the kitchen cupboard. Her mum's like, Aubrey, he tried to he tried to stop him, that monster. And the deputy says, calm down, mum, I'm going to go and get him. And she's like, no, no, Aubrey, it's not safe. And meanwhile, at the police station, Brenda runs down the hall and hides in an empty room. I'm not entirely sure what this room is for, because um, it's not really a cupboard. It's not a storage cupboard either, because there's nothing in there, one, to be stored, or two, any hooks or anything in there. It just looks like an empty room. Um, and she runs in there and she closes the door um, and then basically puts her hand over her mouth as Santa starts stalking her with an axe, scraping it on a wall. Different axe! Well, this is not the fire axe that he used to kill Giles. This is the axe that he originally picked up at the start of the movie. So where has that been sitting? <laughs> He's just like got a holster on his back like the fucking gun in Die Hard. I don't know. Um... But it's Aren't we at the face facts here, okay? <laughs> this Santa Claus, maybe Mary Poppins. <laughs> Just keeps pulling stuff out of her bag, you know. We, we do, at the beginning of this movie, during the credits, we see that he's brought two suitcases with him. One which is full of masks, and the other one which is just full of fucking violent shit. 
like just like, like like contraptions of death and torture. <clears throat> it's like, oh, yes, an apple core. We can use this later. <laughs> we can get creative with this. Um, yeah, like he's scraping it along the walls. He finally gets to the door in which Brenda is behind. And he reaches down, he grabs the door, starts to turn the handle, and that's the end of our five minutes. Gary, what was your, your favourite bit scene or bit of dialogue from these five minutes? Um... I would love to say, you know, the, the Donnell Logue, um, who plays our jailhouse Santa Claus. Oh, he's so good in this movie. So good in this He's movie. good. He's great in everything. He's my favorite, one of my favorite character actors. And um, he really, if you need to find a guy that's not Dennis Leary, that's better than Dennis Leary, <laughs> you, you, you get you, you get Donnell Logue to, to be your, your thing because I know this is a hero show, but he was the, the, the bomb on, on Gotham as Harvey Bullock. Mm. He really played the hell out of that role, and um, I love him in other things. And he just goes into this whole rant about, "Where's my bowl of figgy oh, pudding?" So good, man. As, as, as a you know, medium, you, know, you are right. It's it's really really good, and, but yeah, the, the the whole the whole disembowelment thing in, in the house, and the, that that that's probably you know the greatest thing. One of, these, one of the biggest crimes is film. It commits a lot of crimes. Is uh, <laughs> It's just it's just set up to say hey, you know, because once once the kid dies in the beginning, like all bets are off. Yeah. Which is what I favorite thing about this film. Like they're gonna set it up, and this guy's gonna die. We're gonna set it up, and this girl's gonna die. Oh snap! This girl's having sex and getting high. Ooh, she gonna die next yeah. too. You know. <laughs> so it just it sets it up and knocks him down, and the, that whole stitch where you know. Oh, I was a police officer for forty years. I have a good eye for people. Well, you're going to die, clearly. You yeah, know? it's a weird one because, like, on paper, right? On paper, this movie teases the idea, and apparently, it's backed up that everyone that was going to die received a present on that day or the day before, a box or whatever, um, and that was the indicator they were going to die, which would mean that the killer knew their crimes because it's set up later on I think the, in fact set up and like the deputy says listen um, he knew that uh, these people were having an affair he knew that these people were shooting porn he, like he's working around everyone basically saying he knew all these things about them uh, but then we get to this point where like what the, like it's not fully like parsed out what did he know about the de- like the, the police people or are they just ha- happenstance Um what did the, apart from being an obnoxious little shit, like what did they have on the girl? And there's no mention of a present there for that one. And then ultimately, when the reveal happens, and the real reveal in this movie is some straight up Scooby Doo bullshit. It's a character that you've never seen before. And then we get the flashback to explain why he has essentially killed the deputy's dad was because he was the cop that took down this guy's dad, back when he was also holding a flamethrower um, and murdering people like 40 years before or whatever it was. But if that's the case, right, if that's the case, I just kind of feel like the town would know this. Like, this would be a legend and people would be like, whatever happened to his son? You know, like, uh, what are the chances another Santa killer would come out? Like, no one thinks about this at all. And also, it just, like... It's kind of like they had an idea, Gary, is what I'm saying, is they had an idea and a concept, which I really like. On paper, the idea of having someone dressed like Santa during one of these SantaCon things that happen, um, I think it's a great idea, right? I also love the idea of, you know, he's he's sending presents to people that have sinned in the town, quote-unquote, and he's picking them off. All that stuff's great, but... You just kind of need to give me a little bit more. <laughs> you just kind of have to explain it a lot. You can't just kill off characters, and there's no explanation at any point in this movie as to what the you know what they did and why they died. You get like two or three, and to be honest, they're on the extreme level of things that would cause like like quote unquote sins. And that's the movie don't give a fuck about that um, unless he overheard things when he was fixing their chimneys because he's a chimney repairman. Because get it, he's Santa. Um, it's all connected. It's Mary all Poppins, yeah. <laughs> you see, because I have an explanation for you for your your how does he know which ones to kill thing? Because you know, in the in the other movie, 
the children wrote wrote a letter to the nanny that they wanted and Mm -hmm. the father tore it up mean old dickhead mr banks you know (laughs) and they threw it in the wind and then mary poppins caught all that shit and she said you know what i'm gonna come do some strange shit and then lie to everybody else because i try to snap my fingers many times to clean my room yep that shit's a lie it doesn't work no no doesn't work (laughs) play games all sorts I, I do love the idea of our, our new horror crossover Santa Mary Poppins movie. Um, I'm sure We're writing in, a better movie, Duncan, okay? <laughs> I'm sure someone in Blumhouse will have this out by the end of the month. Um, Gary, you have podcasts, you're doing stuff out there. You, you did tell me other episodes, you've not put anything out recently. However, you have a very rich back catalogue of episodes that people can definitely go and check out until your next episodes drop. Where can people check them out? Uh, yes, please um, go to legionpodcast.com, look for Cine Beach Podcast, look for two drink minimum commentaries, look for uh, Last Call of Torchies. Um, all these are children that I love and then, uh, that I've, I've worked with many people who have worked very hard for me and I've uh, been appreciative of these last 10 years. Amazing, amazing. Uh, yourself ladies. included, Duncan. You know? I have been, yeah, like way back in the day. Um, ladies and gents, it is always a pleasure recording with Gary. We have more of these episodes coming up with more guests. We're running episodes from the 1st through to the 24th of this month before we take a couple of weeks off. And I know for a fact there's an episode dropping tomorrow. So until then, take care and I will speak to you next time.